Hey guys, welcome back. And here is finally assembled the Lego Technic Unimog. Entirely done from start to finish. Now, let me start off by saying that this is truly a marvel of engineering. I don't know what the engineers did, if they used computer design, if they built physical prototypes, if they had to just go through many revisions, but whoever designed this was brilliant. The design work on this is incredibly good and very, very accurate in some respects to real vehicles. And I am truly amazed by what they've done here. So here I am finally reviewing the finished thing. I, I don't know if I'm gonna if what you guys will see because I haven't have not edited this or uploaded it yet, but I have shown like intermittent steps and things I found interesting through the um, build. So, I, uh, but it's, it, they all come, are just somewhat interesting aspects, but once you've built this and felt it and done all the work, it is, it just feels so great to finish it and you get to see all the design work that was put into this. It's incredible. So, let's just take a 360 look of it. And I actually just realized I didn't fasten the uh, the cabin down. So, first of all, I'll start off by showing you the power functions gimmicks, probably. But maybe I'll, maybe I'll start off by showing you the steering gimmick. It's kind of hard to figure out where to start showing this because it's just so large and so many things are going on. So. First of all, it has the steering. So, if you turn, you can turn the wheels by turning this gear at the top. Now, the problem is, it's just a single axle running down here, back here, right back there, down to those big rubber wheels that are very large, and they have to run through a very complex system to get down to the wheels. So, the problem is, it's uh, there's too much going on for just for, to move a little gear. So, you cannot move the wheels if it's on the ground. You can only move them if it's moving, kind of, or if they're off the ground, which is actually fairly accurate to a vehicle that does not have power steering. If you guys have ever driven a vehicle without power steering, you have to be moving to steer. You can't really move the wheels if you're just on the ground. And, uh, but with vehicles with power steering, no matter where you are, the hydraulics will just move the wheels, even if you're at a dead stop. Anyway, now for the suspension. Now the suspension, it ha every wheel has independent suspension, which is a very nice touch. You'll notice that it can tilt on either side. The front will go down separately from the back. All of them will go down. And even if you can run over something... <coughs> let me just grab a weight here to show you. You can run over something and not uh, affect the rest of the vehicle if I can just get the wheel to go straight. Actually, I'll do it on the rear wheels, because those ones don't turn. As you can see, one of the wheels can go up, essentially. And if you press it down, because it's, it's just made of plastic, so it won't really do it that well by itself, but you'll notice that there's a lot of space here and very little space here. The suspension is actually working. So it lessens every bump it goes over. So it's a very nice detail. Now, if I can maybe back this camera up a little, I'll show you the underbody of the vehicle. Here's the underbody, obviously. Now as you can see, there are two springs that run up from every area. There's a universal joint that controls the four-wheel drive, and it has a great range of motion. Now, there, while this vehicle doesn't actually, is not actually electronically driven, it does have four-wheel drive transmission. And an interesting thing my dad was pointing out that I did not realize is that this has, uh, what do you call it, differentials on the wheels. So whenever you're, if, I don't know, um, any, anybody who's an engineer out there who's watching this would know that when you're turning in a vehicle, 
the outer wheels have to go more far than the inner wheels do, just out of the virtue of the way of a turn. Like, you guys know what I mean. If you're turning, the outer wheels will have to go further. So this thing actually has the ability, even though all four wheels are connected mechanically, for one wheel to move without the other one moving. However, if you put input from the other end, all wheels will move, but inner, the inner wheels or the outer wheels can move more or less, just depending on a turn, which is what real vehicles actually do. So that's a very interesting thing. And it has no brakes, but that's fairly obvious. I don't know why you need brakes on a set like this. But very, very nice attention to detail with those, uh, with the independent uh, differentials. And you, as you can see, there's a lot going on here with this gearing stuff. You see, if you move an actual drive shaft, all the wheels move. But if you move one of the wheels, the other wheels don't move. So it's kind of a one-way street in that respect. Now, I think that's all to do with the wheels. But overall, the wheels are very, very nice. They're the same actual wheel rims that come with the Technic Supercar from 2011, I think. But they have new treaded tires, and the tires are very huge. I think I showed you this in the first video, but my hand, they're quite uh, substantial in comparison to my hand. Another interesting thing to do with the detailing is that the entire front end here is made out of bricks. Lego bricks, not Technic elements. But, anyway, I'll get on to the next thing. I think I'll probably show you guys the winch first. So, some of you guys, as I was mentioning in another video, I think, may have noticed that when you're operating the PT, the front PTO, which in the standard configuration is the winch, that sometimes it won't work. And I already showed you instructions on how you can maybe fix that. And that might be a common problem on Technic sets of this size. But anyway, see, it has instructions for all the controls here. Now this first set of controls is the yellow lever goes up, the red lever goes down, and then you can uh, move the move the electronic button here for the winch to move. So let's do that. Oops, wrong way. Now I don't know how well you guys can see this because it moves very slowly, but it is coming out. Now, you guys may be thinking, well, it comes out really slowly, that's lame. That's actually not lame, because, because of how well uh, the, gear, because of the gear ratio and the way it works, it'll allow it um, to pull quite a lot of weight in comparison to how, uh, the, how strong the motor is. Because you can see the gear he along here, the actual PTO gear, is moving very quickly, but the gear that's running the winch is moving very slowly, which leaves the winch with a lot of torque. Now let me just retract that. Uh, where's the button? So, and another interesting thing is that with the PTO being at the front and the back as the same kind of connection, you can actually take the front winch and move the uh, move it to the back, and take the front cr the back crane and move it to the front, which I will show you. And there's actually a hydraulic, a pneumatic valve up here for the crane. So, speaking of the crane, I think we're going to take a look at that now. So, to move the, first of all, we're going to move the crane mechanically by turning it. The way you do that, according to the instructions, is to move both levers up. As you can see, that turns the crane. mechanically and it's using the PTO on the back to do that and it moves rather slowly but again it probably has a lot of power a lot of torque rather now the instructions are actually kind of faulty they're showing that for the to start the pneumatics you must move the yellow lever down and the red lever up and that will allow you to move the rear pneumatics and if you have it on the front, to move the yellow lever down and the red lever down. 
Now, that is completely false. It does not matter what you do with the red lever because of the way the transmission works. See, the yellow lead, there are two transmission shafts under this box. The one, the outmost one, which is controlled by the yellow lever, has the motor inputting directly into it. Now, you can either switch to the pneumatic pump, which immediately disconnects it from the second lever, which is the red one, or you can move it to the upper, sec upper setting, which is to move it to the second shaft, which then allows you to control the PTOs. So despite the fact that they're acting as if the red lever does something in relation to the pneumatics, once you've turned on the pneumatic pump, it's completely disconnected the red lever from doing anything. So, speaking of which, we'll move the yellow lever all the way down, and if it's not working properly, the yellow lever needs to go down a little bit. Try jiggling it if it's not going down all the way. So, once we've done, once we've moved the yellow lever down, and as you can see, there are actually some pictures here to show you. This bottom one is the pump, this upper one is to show the mechanical settings, this one is for the rear PTO, and this one's for the front PTO. Once you've set it to the pneumatics, these no longer, the red lever no longer matters at all. Also, if you're going to be using the rear one, set that to the rear. Just push it backwards. If you're going to set it to the front uh, pneumatics, which is connected to nothing right now, set it to the front. But anyway, let's fire this baby up. Push the uh, motor to the right, I'm pretty sure, to start the pump. So now, we have gained pneumatic power in the rear, which I'll show you in a sec. Also an interesting feature on the back is you can move down the outriggers. I also recommend, due to the fact that uh, the transmission is made out of springs, because the battery box is on this side, it has a tendency to kind of lean this way. So either you can um, store the crane over on that side as best you can, or the better recommendation, if you're going to have it set up overnight or something, just leave the outriggers down because that does not allow it to move. But anyway, let's start up the let's start playing with the pneumatics here. So this first lever will control this um, this ram. There we go. Now the second lever here will control the one up here. Let me just move my camera up a little. So as you can see, it will allow you to do that. And you notice once it moves slowly, that means it's losing pressure. Now we're going to get it to gain pressure a little bit because successively the higher you go on the crane, the more pressure you'll require to move at all. Now the mechanical hand here sometimes requires a little bump to move because it has a really long tube that could get twists in it and stuff like that. So usually it takes a second to move. Once you've started moving it, it tends to go a little faster though. Now, let's see if I can get this to actually pick up something. It cannot actually touch the ground. Like if you have something on the, right on the ground, it cannot pick it up. Just because it doesn't reach down that far. Which is kind of sucky. Another thing is that because there's tubing connected to this, sometimes it doesn't move properly. So you need to kind of help it out a little. So let's set it down. Let's um, gain some pressure and close the nose there, or the, the grapple. Let's try to pick it up now. It's kind of getting caught there. Ah, oh, man. Oops. Uh, the rubber grips couldn't hold it properly, but if you have something smaller or something that could be gripped actually. I had some masking tape here that my, I was letting my sister play with this and if you have like something that it can actually grip around, it'll hold it better. And if it's moving slowly, it's just because it's gaining pressure because that's the way pneumatics work. They're not like a mechanical actuator where you're always moving, they have to gain pressure, that's the point. And that's why hydraulics are often used on construction machines because they often have a lot of power. They have a lot of power, but they just need to take a while to gain pressure. Now, as you can see, I moved the I uh, switched to the mechanical setting to rotate this around. Sometimes the hoses get a little caught. 
Huh. What's that? If it's not moving, sometimes the hoses just get caught. You have to, if you're playing with this, you have to make sure you're not touching, you're not, uh, stressing out the hoses. Let's try that again. Hmm. Normally it goes a little further than that, but I'm not going to stress it out just because I don't want to break this. But let's switch it to the pneumatic setting now. And let's... There we go. And there we've set that masking tape inside there with fairly little help. But it's still it doesn't work perfectly just because it's ultimately a toy, I guess. But you can still get some pretty cool stuff out of this crane back here. And it works fairly well considering the small tolerances and the fact that the hoses often get in the way. Sometimes it needs a little help, but it works fairly well on its own right. In its own right. But well, that's the crane gimmick, so I can't think of anything else I have to show you in this mode. So I'm going to show you an alternative assembly method. I might have to split this video up into several parts, but um, I think I might be able to do it in one shot here. I'll probably do the main model in one shot, and then the alternate model in another shot with the snowplow, which I'll show you in a sec. I have to still build that, though. Anyway. It shows here some alternative instructions, actually, where it says you can detach both the winch on the front and the crane on the back and switch them around. And that's actually pretty cool. It's fun to do. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, first of all, we might as well just lift... Actually, we'll leave the outriggers down. It's a little, probably a little easier that way. But let me turn this around. And also an interesting thing is that if you move it, like many other Technic sets, you can see the cylinders opening. Actually, you know what? I'll probably show you that first. Uh, I'm going to lift the box. It's a little easier to move stuff around. Uh, I think I showed you guys the transmission already. It's really cool down there, and I figured it out a little more. But the way it works basically is there's an internal shaft that's always spinning, and there's a little piece that is connected to the internal shaft, and there's a switcher that moves it and puts it into gear with other parts. So, let me lift the cab to show you the engine. lower my camera a little. Oops. Bear with me guys, it's kind of a big thing, it's hard to fit into the shot and not hit stuff and all that. So you take these little bolt, push these little bolts out a little, and then you can lift the cab like on a real truck often. There it reveals the internal combustion engine's head. You can see the gearing down here. And if I can lift the outriggers, just so we can roll it around. You can see that the cylinders actually move, like on many Technic sets. So it's kind of a nice feature. But I do like how the cab lifts. It gives it a nice view and you can kind of see the... You can get better access to the transmission and you can see the suspension and stuff and all that. But anyway... Let me switch the uh, crane and the winch around now. And it's good to have the box off. It's a little easier to reach down to the crane that way. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the four bolts that hold this on. The top two we're going to remove entirely and just take them off and set them down because we need them on the back and the bottom two will stay in but just disconnect from the disconnect the uh, winch from the body there we go there's the winch entirely also we're going to take the gear with us but leave the PTO shaft and sometimes this little brick piece gets disconnected alright so remember we have two of these that we have to take with us separately we have a gear and we have the entire um, winch here. 
Now let's move the box over to the side and go to the back. Oops. Darn crane. Anyway, uh, let's put the outriggers down because it's a little easier, I'm pretty sure, that way. Alright, I'm going to probably have to take the camera off its stand here. So what we're going to do down here is there's another bolt down here, similar, it's exactly the same piece as this one, and we're not going to pull it out completely, but we're just going to pull it out enough so that it releases itself from the main truck assembly. We're probably going to be do, do both sides because you can't just tilt it over, you have to remove it frontwards. So we're going to do the bottom one down there, which is, well that's close up of, the, of those things. Oh, also, these things move, these uh, valves move both up and down, which is an interesting feature. And down there, you can see another one that we're going to pull out. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. And it'll come off cleanly, hopefully, if, the, if these things have come out all the way. Don't pull it off completely yet because we still have to remove the pneumatic hoses but just make sure all of those are out properly we're gonna set it down and then right here it's connected to this blue um, axle hose connector piece we're just gonna pull the hose out there we go sometimes you'll hear a pop because there's still some air pressure but that piece is the same one on the front and that's what it's gonna be connected to later so as you can see, here is the crane in its entirety. And actually this crane would work by itself if you made a mount for it on the ground and you connected a compressor to it. And a PTO. But anyway, also we have to remove this shaft here, but leave the PTO, which usually comes out with the shaft, unfortunately. So we're going to have to remove that and put the PTO shaft back in. Alright, so I'm going to set the camera back up here and we're going to move them now. Interesting thing, my part of my camera stand is made out of Lego Technic because I don't have a proper connector for my camera. Alright, so what we do now is we bring this over here and with the crane we have this piece and we have the entire crane so what we're going to do first to attach this to the front is we're going to put this piece onto the PTO where that gear was before but this one has a shaft with it then what we're going to do is we're going to I would recommend you don't have to do this but I'd recommend it, it makes it a world easier. Uh, pull the, try to get the this set of hydraulic or pneumatic lines out a little further just to give you some more slack because normally on the back the hose connects on this side but it has to connect on this side this time so you need a lot more slack. So there we go once we've got it out a little bit more we can connect it to that valve, to this valve here. Now, I, I'm i sorry, but pulling pushing these on is a little hard, so it, it might be off screen for a minute or so, but I'll try. Alright, there we go, it's on. Now, these hoses are really hard to put on, especially the first time. What you need to do is just make sure that it's going on straight and try to look all around it to make sure it has a good seal and it's all on on all sides. But the more they're put on and off, they kind of get stretchy and like this, like this, they, they go on a lot better the more you put them on and easier too. So anyway, next step, there is a hole beside that gear right there and that little extension we put is going to go in there and mesh up with the gears. 
Now, I would recommend making sure the hose does not go that close to the gears as well as you can, just because if it does, it might screw up the hose. And I'm going to try to bring the iPod, my, uh, iPod down to show you guys. So, usually what I do is I do put the uh, hose in close proximity to the gears, but just make sure that it's not tangled in between them. So, never done this with one hand, so it's going to be a little hard. But just make sure that the gears mesh up. There we go. As you can see, that shaft went into that hole I was mentioning, the gears meshed up, and now we're just going to push it on and put two of, the, put two of those uh, pieces in, those kind of rivet or bolt-like pieces that, I, that are used for holding it on. These ones. And they connect in the exact same way as they did on the back. Just make sure that the ones from the winch you took off, because you need to take those off. Now, also, the ones on the bottom will retighten. I don't know if you guys can see those, but right here. Wow, this is getting long. Alright, and down along here, there's another one of those. There are four connections for every, for each end, so just remember that. If you have all four, then you're done. So the, as you can see there, the crane is now on the front and should work once we test it out. But we're not going to do that yet. I'll raise the outriggers just so it's a little easier to move around. We're going to check out the back now. And what we're doing here is a lot, lot simpler just because the winch isn't nearly so heavy, so it's a little less unwieldy. So we have this gear that we took off the front that just plugs on right onto the PTO there. So then the next thing we do is this one will just go on as best you can. You can see there are these four kind of girders sticking out. The, this thing just slips right into those as long as these uh, pieces are in all the way and won't get in the way. Make sure the gear slips in, and then just push them in. And the two that we took off will just go right in here. There you go. So now I guess we'll just put the box back on. But actually, maybe in a second. But where did this thing come from? Oh, this is from the back, I think. Watch out, because sometimes the uh, rear tail lights and stuff come off. And let's start this thing up. Now, the controls are just reversed for the PTOs. Like, it, rather than thinking that this, like, that the, um, the top setting is for the crane and the bottom setting is for the winch, just think about them as the front and back PTO. And in that respect, it's the same. So let's start this thing up. So as you can see, now the setting that would have been for the crane's turning originally is now moving the winch. So you can actually kind of tow stuff behind it. And the string isn't that long, unfortunately, but in comparison to the size of the vehicle, it's probably about as long as the vehicle, but it's it's still kind of a nice feature. I wish the string had been longer, though. Now, uh, if we turn it to the front PTO, it will rotate the crane. So that's kind of cool. Now... We're going to set start the pump and disengage that one just because it doesn't matter. Now, remember, this va this control here, this valve, is and there's actually a sticker here showing you, this setting is for the, is, activates the rear pneumatics, but this setting activates the front pneumatics, and this third hose is running to the pump, if you're wondering. But So we need to set it. This is neutral. This is to the rear, and this is to the front, and there's little... Uh, drawings here for you to see. Let's start off the pump. And now the front is uh, powered. So what we're going to need to do actually is turn this around because the controls for the actual uh, arm are now on this side. So that's kind of annoying but oh well. Let's put down these outriggers. 
And let's start up the crane. Let me just set this on its stand again. As you can see, it works now. If you're having trouble with it working, make sure that the tube um, went in properly on the front. If that's not the problem, then make sure that the, two, that the other connection at the valve is working. Because those are the only two things that, those are the only two things that are, that if the front is not working but the back isn't working, those are the only two problems that are possible, I'm pretty sure. Because those are the only two spots that are exclusive to the front valve. But as you can see, it works just as well. Unfortunately, there's nowhere you can really load it here, but you can pick up stuff, I guess, and kind of move them. Uh, let me set that masking tape there so we can try picking it up. It's kind of uh, a little bit more difficult when you have it on the front, though, because you can't rotate it without having to go to the other side. But you'll manage, I guess. And... There we go, and we'll pick it up. If you guys are wondering, this, this crane is moving, it's just heavy, so it needs to gain a bit of pressure. As you can see, there we go. It lifted that thing. So, let's turn, let's uh, release this thing, I guess. And I will just turn this thing off. And uh, an interesting thing is you can actually still operate the pneumatics for a couple of seconds afterwards if there's still pressure. Like, you can still kind of move them. Even if there's no pressure, you can always lower them because of the way the valves work. That's, that's actually true on real vehicles. Like, I... My dad has a hydraulic run backhoe for the it's hydraulically run and I accidentally pressed one of the valves once when it was closed and the bucket just slammed onto the ground. So that actually works on real vehicles with pneumatics or hydraulics. So we will uh, raise the outriggers and rotate this back and grab the box. I'll show you what it looks like with the box for a second, I guess. Oops, sorry. There we go, there's Lego Technic Unimog with the opposite settings for the crane and the winch on the back. And it's uh, pretty nice, I, I quite like having it this way. Uh, it's You can't really lower anything into the, into the bucket, into the box, like on the back, but it's still kind of cool. So I guess this would conclude the review for the Unimog pretty much. I still am going to make a separate video though for the alternate model, like I usually do with Technic reviews. That one will be a lot shorter because this one showed the construction and some, and some of that stuff and tips and stuff. But overall, if I had to review this set, it's 10 stars. There are not any real problems I can think of. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's kind of the suspension problem because the battery box is on one side. That's negligible, usually. You can either just rotate the springs if you want, put down the outriggers, or just leave the crane a little bit off to the right, which is just as simple. The, high, the pneumatic system works as well as it possibly could. The main problem with it is that the hoses sometimes get tangled up into the into the into it once you're move, when you're moving the crane and stuff. The PTOs are a little slow, but that but but you have to figure on such a large vehicle, it's using a fairly small motor, so it it has it has as much force as it can, but there are some problems. Also, the um, the little crane at the end doesn't move as well as it should just because it has hoses connected to it, so they sometimes get in the way. Uh, the steering doesn't work too well just because it's so large. Those, those are all kind of negligible, though. This thing is truly a masterpiece of engineering, and considering what it does, those three or four kind of small problems are really negligible, and I absolutely love this thing. I, I did... 
put a lot of work into buying it and I had to wait a long time to find it in the store and I had to keep checking into Toys R Us to see if they finally got them in stock and I did a lot of work to get this. I did a lot of work to build this. It literally took me a day. I woke up in the morning and I, um, I, I cleaned my room, which was fairly dirty. It wasn't that dirty, I guess, but I, I wanted to clean it before I assembled this. I took a shower and then I literally started building this. I stopped probably at 11 at night or maybe 11.30. And it took me another half hour or so to troubleshoot the problem with the transmission that I've talked about. But I, I have to say I had a lot of fun and I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to experience Lego Technic Unimog before I die. And from a, uh, from a toy perspective, this isn't too great especially for young children, just because you can break the hoses by moving it too much. Actually, an interesting thing is that there are some uh, little bearings here that don't allow you to rotate the crane past here, because it'll slam together. I only realized that a minute ago, actually, but it's, uh, it's, it's, I really love this thing, and it, it's sad to me that a lot of people cannot get this, especially if you're young or if you're in your preteens and you don't have a job or anything. It's really sad to me that you guys won't be able to get this, because this thing is a lot of fun, and it's sad that not, that some people won't be able to get it. And I, I would wish that everybody could get it. And, but it, it took me, it took me some work to, to finally get this. My next big thing that I'm going to be trying to get is Lego Mindstorms, which, is going to be a bit more difficult because you can't find that in the stores here where I am. You have to get it on the internet. But, very, very nice set. Ten stars. If you can get it, get it. If you're a mocker, it has a lot of great pieces. Like, you can make some interesting robotic mocks with the pneumatic pieces. It has a bunch of, uh, like, technic pieces that you can't get anywhere else that are special for the transmission, but they can be used for a lot of other things, I'm sure. So, overall, if you can get this do get it, because it's great. The wheels are great, the parts are great, the gimmicks are great. Everything about it is great. It has five instruction manuals. And I'll probably leave you with one more thing, a little tip, is how to change the batteries, I guess. They actually gave you instructions on how to do this. I don't quite remember where they put it. It's probably an instruction booklet number one. Let me check. Uh, yeah. I think it's instruction booklet number one. But the way you do it is you go down here. I'll probably take the camera off its tripod again just to show you close up. There are these red bolts here which you can pull out. There's one on either side. Uh, oops, came out all the way. And there is one underneath here, in the front wheel well. <sighs> Alright, I think that should loosen it. And then just remove the, um, the electric motors plug here. Just pull it off. Then you can remove the battery box. No troubles at all. And an interesting thing is the the wire hangs out underneath, but you could probably stick it in through there, through here or something. But I didn't just because there are a lot of gears there. I don't want it to damage the wires. But anyway, once you have the battery box here, you can open it up, and you can change the batteries. It did not come with those batteries. I just got them from a remote control car. But you can uh, it takes six double A's. You can replace them, and then once you want to put them back in, just make sure the electric wire is stuck through there. It makes it a little bit easier for all of us. Then just stick it into the very nice, it has some nice ridges there for the battery box to sit in. Make sure you're putting it in the right way, too. That's I've made that mistake. And slip it in there. It's a, it's a lot easier if you have two hands to do it, but I'm just filming this with one hand. So stick that in. And then you can stick the bolts here in. Oops, accidentally pressed that. And there you go, that's how you change the battery on the LEGO Technic Unimog. But, that's LEGO Technic Unimog. Ten stars, buy it if you can. 
I'll be back soon with the alternate model to show you guys. And I absolutely love this thing, and I'm sad that I'm going to have to disassemble it to use it for mock. So I'll see you guys later.